Sydney. Yeah, she has. She came down here at sort of at the end of her prep last time around. Uh, she's in better form this time around. She's travelled down. We haven't had to do anything with her. And uh, she presents pretty well. Has J-Mac and yourself tried to cobble a plan to take down Imperatrice? Well, we won't change it too much. Uh, she rode, rolled forward last time. She'll roll forward here again, but um, she will be very hard to hold out. The good three came through a little bit earlier on. Uh, is it still all systems go with the gold trip? Still all systems go here. He ran first up on a good three. Uh, the valley always tends to lend itself, has a little bit more gid with that Strathair surface, and uh, yeah, he'll take his place. Big arrow ahead for you and the team, Kieran. Good luck with all your runners. Cheers. Thanks, Nodge. So some important information there. We'll see Gold Trip still line up despite the uh, track being upgraded to a good three, but this has been a beautifully presented surface by Marty Sinan and his track team at the Mooney Valley Racing Club. Michael Walker, uh, you've had a good chat to your uh, good friend in Opie Bosson a little earlier, and he's just oozing confidence about his, this mare, and in fairness, so he should. Yeah, so he should. She's broken two track records. One of them was her own. Uh, but uh, Opie just said to me, oh, you know, we've ridden together a lot of, throughout the years for a lot, long time, and uh, I said to him, is she the best sprinter that you've actually sat on? He said, yes. He said, hands down, she's the best sprinter I've ever ridden. And as we all know, a champion rider as Opie is, he's ridden some champion sprinters in his lifetime. And uh, I just, it's just good to be a part of this here today and see her on track. And it was a bold move from Tiakau. They elected not to go to Sydney and take the opportunity to run into a Everest. Um, but it's money compared to a Group 1. For a breeding purpose, you'd rather win a Group 1 whether it was a dollar rather than a million dollar race because ongoing, breeding, breeding wise, she, her foals are just going to be worth so much. Money. Charlotte Littlefield down behind the gates, how's the uh, atmosphere and how are the jockeys and, and horses down there? Yeah, good. I was originally going to have a little chat with Opie Bossum um, until we saw that Imperatrice was just being a little bit of a handful down to the barriers. But having had a chat with him uh, just uh, prior to this, he did say that she did this last time when she uh, won. So it's it's a, it's something that she just gets gets into her head just as she goes around to the barriers, a bit like a cage fighter. She is ready to box this girl. And I don't think you have to be at all worried about that, clearly, as she uh, won so dominantly last start. So they're just applying the blindfold on her. She obviously is a horse that just saves all her energy right until uh, race time and uh, she's, uh, she's just about to actually start the loading process now amongst all of them. So uh, we'll head over to Matt Hill. A couple of worrying signs, particularly if you've backed the favourite at $1.35 on the tote. Now $1.30 now make that Imperatrice ahead of $6.25 for I Am Me. Kieran Maher and David Eustace have won the race twice. I am me going up, of course, Ma Eustace winning with Loving Gabby and Bella Nipotina last year. Here's the Inferno. Jake Noonan goes up aboard the seven-year-old. Imperatrix walking around riderless and Jigsaw is the other one with Daniel Moore who won the race with Jonker a couple of years ago. Imperatrix goes up riderless. She's been a little bit fizzy. There's movement towards the inside. Barrier attendance with a watchful eye. The 1,200 metres start parallel to us, so can't quite tell which of these horses is a little bit fractious in the gates. Jigsaw is the other one that's milling around. Now it's Buenos Noches who is fractious. Buenos Noches is going to get back out. Now Buenos Noches has drawn barrier number five, which is right next to Imperatriz. So just a few little anxious moments here behind the start. Now some news uh, is coming through. Buenos Noches being uh, vetted. Chris Elkington on scales letting us know Buenos Noches is being vetted. And he's pretty fractious. He's still rocking and rolling in the stalls. They're having trouble getting him out. So Buenos Noches has now been released. So the vet's going to have a good look at him. So some... Charlotte Littlefield, you're on horseback about 30 or 40 metres behind the gates. Have you got eyes on Buenos Noches? I do have eyes on Buenos Noches. There's no obvious signs. A uh, little bit of blood in the mouth. So he might have just bitten his tongue, but nothing obvious there. Nothing obvious blood-wise on his legs. He's just having a trot round. Um, but I do think 
he might be coming out. So, I, uh, yeah, we're on back up to Matt Hill. Jay is uh, going to scales and will receive that officially, but Gwanis Not Jays is going to come out here. So we're down to uh, six runners. A disappointed uh, Blake Shin. 4.22 Vets Advice, Juanis Notches is out, 4.22 on Vets Advice, so we're down to six runners, stand by for a start, all is in readiness. Starter just waiting for the word from Stewards, I am more standing patiently. They're set, ready, and away they go. And a beautiful line two in the small field, Uncommon James Imperatries beat them out. Not far away, I Am War on the inside and Jigsaw is forcing the issue. A length and a half, I Am Me and last of all, a length and a quarter away, the Inferno. Imperatries is going to do it from the front today and led by a half length, Jigsaw at the 800 metres. They're a length and a quarter, I Am War, Uncommon James. Then I Am Me on the outside of the Inferno and they're not going that hard. 7.50 out, Imperatries, the odds on face. Favourite, led Jigsaw by half a neck. They're a length and a half, Uncommon James, I Am War. The Inferno's trying to get off the fence, it's on the steel. And last, I Am Me, Imperatrice now skipped. A length and a quarter, Jigsaw immediately under pressure. Coming up to the turn at the 350. Uncommon James hooked to the outside from I Am War, who's almost going backwards, passed by the Inferno and I Am Me, but Imperatrice glides around the corner. Three lengths in front of Uncommon James, then I Am Me up the middle but Imperatrice called upon, still three lengths in front, and the Tangerine Tsunami's going to do it again. Imperatrice won it well. Second, I Am Me, Uncommon James, or the Inferno for third, a gap to I Am War and Jigsaw. All hail the Queen of the Valley in the spring of 2023. They've had a plan, Tiakau and Mark Walker, and it's been executed on each occasion. Track records in the McEwen and the Moya put the writing on the wall for what we've just enjoyed in 109.59, which is 0.3 of a second outside Malagera's track record in Australian stakes. Not quite the 108.76 that Haydock achieved to win this race in 2020, but nowhere near the Flint Heart surface it was on that occasion. She's just a star, and it's a pleasure for us to be in her midst. Opie Bosson has rated her to a T. Michael D's done the seat warming in between, but Opie is here, and Imperatrice once again is a Group 1 winner at the Valley. The William Reed in the autumn, the Manicato in the spring, I am me, the best of those in behind. She's a star, and she is impossible to beat at the Valley. But let's hear from Opie Bosson with Charlotte. Yeah, here we are. We're just going to have a little trot back, because she's still quite fruity, but geez, you're making this a bit of a habit. It's a lot easier on horses like this and she just does it for me really and she's, she's just something special. She is something special, she's incredible, she loves the valley, we love having you here riding her and uh, is she the best horse you've ever ridden? She is by far, she just, I know I've said it a million times but I've just never ridden a horse that can just switch off and then just go bang when you want her so um, oh, more to come I think. And ridden on speed or ridden at the back? She can do everything. Yeah, did, that wasn't the plan, but we, we were there and she was doing it comfortable. So and when she changed legs all at the right times, we had a very turn and straight. And I knew we were, we were going to be hard to beat. Have a nice canter back. Well done, let that sink in. Thank Another you. great one. Well done. Well, Mark Walker, congratulations. Oh, no worries. You can jump in, my friend. Give me a manhandle. Congratulations. Um, well, first, the change in tactics. Uh, describe what were you thinking when, he, when she bounced so well? Well, that's sort of the, the genius of Opie, you know. He, he jumped so well, so why take away that advantage? And uh, I think she had it in, in the bag a long way from home, really, yeah. OK, so it wasn't a surprise to you. And what were you looking for as the key factors, the fact that she was settling, even though leading? Yeah, well... When, when she sort of got there and no one sort of went up to her, I, I think Opie was probably of the opinion that someone had come round and then he'd just take the trail, but when no one did, and I didn't think he was going too hard up on the speed, he, he probably just thought, I'll just stay there. Yeah. Yeah. When you've won as many group ones as her, she's entitled to be called a champion. What's it like to train a champion? 
Well, it, it's just, you know, it's great for all the ownership group. They've been so understanding about not going to Sydney and we're thinking about her longevity and uh, it, it's a big thrill and, um, you know, I think this mayor's keeping Opie in the saddle as well and that's, and Opie's such an important part of our team as well. Yeah, he's charging towards 100 Group 1s. Mark, congratulations, that was brilliant. Thank you. Ben Gleeson's been a key part of the Tiakau team setting up shop here in Victoria from the Cranbourne base and he joins us. So your new job's going well, it's fair to say. Uh, where does this sit in moments for you on a racetrack? Uh, look, it's more so I'm proud and, and privileged to be working with a horse like this, especially uh, with Tiakau as well. Um, I've been fortunate to work with some fantastic horses over the years, but, but never a, a, a sprinter like this, and, and she's a superstar, so uh, incredibly... Um, incredibly humble. What's the management of her been like since the Moya victory and give us some insight into how pivotal Michael d has been almost as the Australian version of Opie in between runs. Yeah a massive thank you and credit to, uh, to Mick D sorry and Opie. <laughs> um, Mick's been massive in doing her track gallops and giving us good feedback and uh, and certainly giving us the confidence she's on track but she's been nothing but a pleasure between runs. She's bounced out her last win, you know, a track record and a good three, which, which probably isn't to her liking exactly, but she bounced out of that run and she's only needed a couple of, of simple gallops and she bounced out of that and, uh, you know, she did that pretty easy. So onwards and upwards to the champion sprint. Ben, I can see the joy and almost disbelief written all over your face. We'll see you at Flemington in a couple of weeks. Cheers. Thanks, Nigel. I hope you and just taking care of things with... Steward Rob Montgomery in a, a quick chat before he joins us after simply jaw-dropping performance from Imperatrice. To make it a Moya and now a Manicato double. Opie, she's up there, if not now, perhaps the best you've been aboard, but have a look around over your shoulder and you've got a crowd that's just transfixed on what she's just done. Where's this sit-in moments for you on a racetrack? Oh, it's up there. I don't usually get too nervous, but today I was walking the box a bit this morning and didn't want to talk too much, so um, it got to me a little bit, but uh, she, um, she pulls you through it. You spoke to Charlotte post-race and said that she basically does it for you. Can you explain that for us in terms of the, the qualities that make her tick? She, um, she, like she jumped and put herself there today and I just gave it a little squeeze so to, just to clear the first two horses and I thought, oh, we're, we're going to lead, we're here. So um, and then as soon as I got there, she switched off and changed legs at all at the right times and ran in the home bend and she just kept coming up underneath me and, and then changed legs and I just had to push the button really. Probably doesn't matter what direction she goes in, but are you curious as to how she'll go up the straight in a champion sprint? What do you think? Um, well, she, she, she might go better than me. I've never won a race in a straight line, so, um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll both be first-timers. You might get your chance in 14 days. Opie, well done. Yeah, thanks very much. It sets up for a great contest in the champion sprint at Flemington with some of the horses coming down, including in secret, and maybe who else will pop up in the next couple of weeks. But uh, Imperatrice is clearly the leading uh, contender in the sprint division, and... Um, the brilliance out of the barriers is what surprised many and Opie Bosson suggesting it wasn't plan A, Michael Walker, but when she begins so well, if you're in front on a horse like that, why not take up the lead? Yeah, definitely. He said to me today that uh, this morning that he wanted to be more positive today in the run and, uh, <laughs> and being in front didn't worry me because you know what, Opie, I've ridden some amazing jockeys throughout my career and I still to this day think that Opie's the best I've ever ridden against. And he's uh, getting quite animated and excited. It's great to see uh, them all enjoying the Melbourne Spring Carnival here with Imperatriz, who's now picked up another Group 1. Let's hear from some of the beaten jocks. Jamie Mott, I am War. Yeah, look, he ran well against some very good horses. Um, going good enough to win something easier. James McDonald, I am me. She was, she was really good. She was in the gates for a long time. Just stepped a little bit awkwardly and was back, but she did a good job to chase. Damien Lane, Uncommon James. He's run honest again. Um, just on the chewy a little early, then got into a lovely rhythm mid-race. Leader just was obviously too good, um, but he fought on Bradley for third. Daniel Moore, Jigsaw? Uh, well, he had his heart broken by a genuine superstar. We jumped well and had a semi-controlling of the rest of the field position, but um, she let go. You know, 600 out, she crept and was just far too good. 
Jake Noonan, the Inferno. Yeah, very pleased with his run. Um, tempo probably was against his chances after they went 100 metres. Look, she's a star, take nothing away from her, but I think he gets his chance in probably a, a more reasonably run race and probably up to 1,400.